Records will be broken, bodies pushed to their limits, and legends created as 12 teams battle to win the longest ocean race on the planet. This is the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. Soon though, it's back into racing mode as for the first time in its history, the Clipper Race Fleet joins the iconic Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Over 600 miles of ocean that have become legendary as one of the must-do events in the sports, where this amateur crew will race against some of the top sailors in the world. It's absolutely fabulous. It brings another colourful dimension to this yacht race and it means that you bring to, onto this race course so many people who have shared this wonderful experience, which is all better for the sport. Hopefully they'll go back to their, where they came from uh, with good fond memories of the race, uh, the spirit of adventure, and they'll spread the message and we'll have the legend going on about the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. It's an event where you feel the build-up to the event. It's just like the build-up to Christmas. They run parallel, so that excitement as each day gets closer to the race start or to when Santa Claus arrives, uh, it's, it's great for everyone. There's going to be a bit of everything in this race as it's looking right now, but it'll really come down to the navigators and the strategy and the tactical team. Uh, so that'll probably make an even playing field for all the boats that are in the race. Yeah, it's an amazing race working in so, so many different conditions here, not just in, in wind, but sea states and stuff like that. So, you know, you've got to be keep aware and just bloody well, one man, you know, one hand for the year and one hand for the boat sort of thing, because anything can happen out there. It's great for your resume to say, well, I've done the Sydney Hobart race, especially on a yacht like this. So it's going to be uh, special, yeah. It's the first time the Clipper race boats will have actually competed against other yachts. So we're really keen to get out there and see what these girls can do. It's going to be a pretty special day. And of course, one of the, you know, almost must-do races in the, in the, in the world. So it'll be, it'll be great. Can't wait. Well, most of the crew haven't done this race before, so I don't think it will really hit them until you know we get out there in Sydney Harbour, see the thousands of spectators, spectator boats, I think then they'll really appreciate what they're about to do. The Boxing Day Start is a massive televised event in Sydney, with hundreds of thousands of people out to watch. The biggest and fastest maxi yachts lead off at the front of three start lines, while the Clipper race fleet is in the middle in its own special class. But there's mayhem on the water with boats everywhere. Wild Oats 11 and Wild Things start fast, tearing down the racetrack as expected, rounding their first mark within minutes. While the Clipper race fleet is led by Great Britain across the starts, closely followed by Henry Lloyd and Ching Dao. In the chaotic and confused water, surrounded by 83 other yachts, it's Henry Lloyd that rounds the first mark ahead yet again. Down the racetrack as they headed out to sea, Switzerland rounds up a touch too early and touches with mission performance. And there's an immediate protest flag from skipper Matt Mitchell. Switzerland takes a 720 degree penalty, costing them time. Though fortunately, there is only minor damage to both yachts on this occasion. Through day one, Patrick van der Zijden guides Old Pulteney into the lead. But it's super tight within the Clipper race fleet, and any of the teams could break away over the coming hours with the changeable weather patterns around the course. Unusually, the wind fades early in the race, with the bigger and faster yachts enjoying excellent conditions, frustrating everyone behind as they seek out every Zephyrs to keep up the pace. Here we are on the second morning of the Sydney Hobart then. Uh, Quite a frustrated night, the wind died away quite a lot, so we spent most of the night going nowhere. We've got a couple of clipper boats around us as well, we've got Switzerland just off the port bow and in front we've got one of the old 68s, which is slightly embarrassing really. But by next morning and their second time into the Bass Strait, just over five miles separate the top four clipper race yachts as they power on south towards Hobart in glorious conditions carving up the miles under Spinnaker. Derry London Derry Durra has also found some breeze and reaches out into the lead, while Great Britain is once again moving up at speed until its history of kindness continues with another episode. Day three of this famous race and Great Britain hits a problem while pressing towards the finish, 
Its spinnaker is loose, flailing, and yet again suffers serious damage. We had a little problem today. We had some big gusts come through. The helm was struggling to hold it, and um, we were just about to change down to the cold three, actually. And typical, as ever, um, helm lost control. Uh, and it, the kite was just hung on by the head. There's also an issue for overall Clipper race leaders Henry Lloyd, which experiences problems with its rudder bearings and so retires from the race as a precaution, given the forecast for heavy weather ahead of them so as not to cause further damage. But it's a bitter blow for the entire team. As the Maxi class fleet tears south, crowds build in Hobart ahead of the finish with the line set close to the harbour for all to see. On the horizon, it's the impressive shape of Bob Oatley's Wild Oats 11 that arrives to take line honours and win the Sydney Hobart race for the seventh time. It took just two days, six hours for the all-star team of Olympic medalists and America's Cup sailors to do their job again. For us, obviously, with all the new competition out there and new, bigger, latter, you know, latest and greatest sort of action racing machines there, it was... To, to, to get one up on the moor is you know, really, really satisfying. And uh, the guys sailed a fantastic race. To just sail, you know, sail back to 13 miles and actually put another 55 miles on them was pretty amazing, you know, and um, yeah, very satisfying. I feel very excited. It's a very important race. It always has been the most important race of the year for us. And to do this today, it's really the chill of the crown. <laughs> In the early hours of the morning, appearing with the rising sun, Derry London Derry Durra tacks up towards the finish line on a flat sea to win Clipper Race 6. The Clipper class in the 69th Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. And what a moment to record their first victory. Uh, we've been sort of close on several occasions um, and just for various reasons we could never make it happen. But uh, to make it happen here is just unbelievable. Like the, the Sydney to Hobart race is, you know, one of the most famous races in the world, and and uh, yeah, to, not only to get on the podium but to, to get in first is just I yeah, can't just can't describe it. My hats off to all the guys. Like they did everything asked of them and more, and you know, it's all, all down to the team, 100%. So proud of them. <laughs> But then there's a surprise, as the next Clipper race yacht to finish is CV10, one of the older 68s now used for training out of Sydney, which has been around the world four times. It's skippered by Jim Doby, with Clipper race founder Sir Robin Knox Johnson as navigator. Well, my campaign uh, fell short of my ambitions. Uh, Derry managed to get over the line ahead of me, but at least she was the only one. Heading for the line in second place three hours later, Great Britain is fighting off a challenge from Old Pulteney, the two yachts just minutes apart. But Great Britain holds on to take second over the line in the Clipper race class. It's exactly what we needed. We had just about everything you could imagine thrown in, uh, could, together with a match race at the end. I mean, nine boats I counted on AIS within range when we came around Tasman Island. You know, the fleet is just so close, it's incredible. And shortly after, Old Pulteney crosses the finish line to collect 10 points in the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. Thrilling. Uh, yeah, never been in something like that before, so it was yeah, mayhem, but in a good way. Uh, no damage, you know, everything went well, but it's super exciting, super exciting. I think a once in a lifetime experience like that. And right up there also is Switzerland, which had the honour of having the first female skipper to finish the Sydney Hobart race this year, while adding to the team's growing points haul. At the prize ceremony, skipper Vicky Ellis is awarded the Jane Tate Memorial Trophy, rounding off a fabulous event for the entire Clipper race fleet. After Henry Lloyd's retirement from the race, one DLL now joins them on equal points, with PSP Logistics third. But three teams are tied on 46 points behind, showing just how close this battle for the title is after six races.